Hi, hi. So, what would you pay for easy, ubiquitous, and reliable Wi-Fi? Everywhere in your house and everywhere in your yard. Now, there's only two of us in this house. Well, two and a half. But you'd be surprised at how many Wi-Fi devices we have. Between the computers, the TV, TV streamers, tablets, the cell phones, the thermostats, the Arduinos, the Raspberry Pis. I have over 40 devices hooked up. So it seems like it'd be worth a little bit of money to make that reliable. Uh, question for today, is it worth $500? Let me show you what I mean by $500. <laughs> Are you okay? I think he heard some thunder. We're about to get wet, so let's go inside. Hey, yep, we got rain done. So, time to come inside. Excuse the mess over there on the desk. I'm doing some tool consolidation. Originally, I had a fairly well-ranked, fairly popular TP-Link router. You can see him delegated down there in the corner. I had him strategically mounted up there, centrally and high. That worked pretty well. Uh, I still had some weak spots and occasional reliability issues, for example. Um, couldn't keep our four Sonos speakers linked together for more than a day in a group without one of them dropping off. So the new solution that's popping up from various vendors is called Mesh Network Routers. The idea is to replace your existing Wi-Fi router, maybe you have some Wi-Fi extenders, with a set of Wi-Fi boxes that are just smarter. They talk to each other and they use cloud-based computing to optimize everything. A lot of hand waving, right? <laughs> well, that's the idea. But, but for example, they, you don't decide whether to put a device on the 2.4 gigahertz frequency or the 5 gigahertz frequency. It decides that. Um, look, it's really raining out there. Let me show you what our little crick does when it rains a lot. That little, that little tiny crick, you may have, sorry, near, not noticed earlier, turns into a gusher. We don't want to be a little dog trying to cross the creek in that. So the solution I'm going to show you today is from a new Silicon Valley startup uh, called Eero, E-E-R-O. A little pricey, $500 for three boxes or $200 per box if you want to buy fewer or more of them. A little, little white guy, kind of Apple-ish looking. Um, it's two Ethernet ports. You connect up your router to one and if you want a local Ethernet device for the other. You know, automatically figures out where they're at, which is which. So just the primary box needs to connect to the router. Your other boxes, they don't have to have any connection unless you want to have a local Ethernet device connected to it. For example, I have the second device in the kitchen corner here. It covers the kitchen and the backyard. And I have a local Ethernet device connected up to that. The third device is down here in the basement. Covers kind of this part of the backyard and the middle part of the house. Nothing connected to it locally. I do have a watt meter. It shows about five watts of power, which is pretty typical for little devices like that. So the big question is, does this solution give us better Wi-Fi strength and reliability? The answer, a resounding yes. Surprisingly, even just one device, one little white Euro box, has a stronger Wi-Fi signal than that TP-Link router with its big antennas. They there's a site here that showed a teardown of this uh, Eero box, uh, smallnetbuilder.com. You can see the antennas are surprisingly small. They're in the four corners of the Euro box. And so I don't know what kind of magic they're using to make that Wi-Fi strength. I don't know, it was probably 20% stronger just with a single box than a fairly new router with more watts of power and bigger antennas. Well, on the previous video I showed how I used Raspberry Pis to, among other things, measure Wi-Fi strength uh, around the house. So here's a plot that shows, over a period of one day, the Wi-Fi strength in various corners of the house. For example, if you look at the tree house here, uh, you can see this is bef with the old router, and here's where I turned on the Euro router with just one box. Um, 
Uh, we had numbers in the minus 80s. One router got us up to like minus 70s. Then when I put that router in the corner of the kitchen, that got us up to minus 60. You can see similar changes for uh, the strength in the kitchen and downstairs and in the, in the deck. The bedroom didn't change much with the second router. But overall, our Wi-Fi strength went from the minus 80s to minus 70s up to minus 30s, minus 40s, and the average about minus 50. Okay, we'll wrap it up here with a summary of the pros and cons. Pros, it's definitely stronger signal, more reliable operation. Um, very easy to install, great customer support. I always worry you when someone says great customer support, that should worry you. That brings me to the cons. Uh, price, of course, uh, it's quite a bit more expensive than anything else out there. Um, another con is it's kind of, you kind of an early adopter. Who knows what other issues might pop up? Reliability might be one. Um, of the three devices, I lost the router connected one in a thunderstorm uh, not long, a week after I got it. Just got zapped and quit working. I called them up and they replaced the new one two days later, and FedEx came. Put the old one in the box, arranged for FedEx pickup, and so it wasn't too much of a hassle. Um, and we're back up and running. Been running fine for three weeks. Um, one last con, which is more appropriate for affects home automation enthusiasts the most. The router capabilities of the Eero are pretty basic. It does allow for static IP and port forwarding, which is what you mostly need, but it does not allow for something called um, what we call loopback. That's where you use the external IP address or domain name if you have a pointing to that IP address within your internal network. So for example, if you have a cell phone hooked up and you want it to control your house, you often do that by pointing at the external IP address then if you're wandering around in your car in the town, you can still talk to your house. And then you come inside your house and use the local Wi-Fi network. You can use, without changing anything, the same IP address or domain name and still talk to your house. Euro doesn't support that. That's called loopback. It's some sort of security concern. Um, now, they say that they will be offering that in a future update. For now, if you need that, which I do, and I think probably many of you do, you'll need to keep your old router as the router. What I did is I turned off the Wi-Fi on that TP-Link router and just use it as a router and then put the Euro in bridge mode so it's acting just as Wi-Fi. If and when they do support loopback, then I'll get rid of that old TP-Link router and use the Euro as a router as well. I expect there to be lots more offerings to come. There's two companies that will be having products later this year, um, Luma and um, Plume. Um, and I expect the big box vendors will offer something similar just because it seems like a great idea. That's it for today. See you next time.